What you sniffing? You smell some flowers? You smell some flowers? Yeah, baby. Yeah, there's more in the trunk, aren't there? Got a few things to unload here. Good thing I cleaned the patio off, right? Love the contrast here. There's the puppy. 11 months old. Puppy, you know, puppy. And there's Toby. He's like, um, I know I'm not allowed out there unless you get permission. I gave permission, he just wasn't listening. Come on, Toby, you're free, come on. You wanna come out? Yeah, I wanna show the stuff, but there's also, I'm like, it would, huh. Would it be too casual to just go through the things as I unload the car? Yeah, I won't do that. I'll try and make it look nice, never mind. He's such a good helper, haven't you, Turbo? Toby, Toby, come on, come on, Toby. Come on. You know, in his old age, he just doesn't feel the need to listen anymore, which I'm not thrilled about. You're supposed to be being a good role model, Toby. Come on. Come on, good boy. <laughs> hey, Turbo. He heard the tone of my voice. He's like, I'm so sorry. You didn't do anything. You good boy. Yes, you are. The uh, recycling pots. I went to a nursery today. Let's talk about it. I got to get things put away. The dog's outside the gate. I'm not really feeling it. Hey, Turbo. How you doing, baby? Look at you! Just looking adorable. Having a great time outside this morning. The weather is beautiful. Plants are looking happy. Like the first truly warm, summery feeling day of the summer. And I tried to get out here to film this video before the sun started to hit over here. But you can see it's slowly creeping through. You get the better shots with the overcast and with the sun, but that's okay. Can make it work. Let's start on this end before the sun gets over here. A little bit of background. If you haven't been watching other videos, I picked up a whole bunch of plants, I don't know, a little over a week ago and just had a lot of other things going on and wanted to do a plant haul, but and here we are. Plant haul time. You see, look at, look at, oh, so many plants. Got a lot of fun stuff to work with here this year. A largely tropicals and annuals. Some of these plants were in previous plant hauls. I just kind of have them all squished together here. Squished is no, they are. This is squished. I was gonna say that's not the right word. That's that's what's happening here. They're very close together. Have to keep them nice and tight to help keep the dog out of it. The puppy's still learning to leave the plants alone, and it makes watering a lot easier. This is okay short term. That nobody cares about any of that, right? We just want to see the plants. Is it, look at them. Here they are. There's some more spread around the patio. I'm probably not gonna go over the ones that were in previous plant hauls, but I'll point them out at least. I don't even know where to get started here, but I better hurry, see that sun? It's creeping over, it's gonna ruin everything. Uh, can I help you? You're not supposed to be in there, no plants. No plants, there you go, good boy. I'll start down here, look at these fantastic variegated sun patients. These are the variegated tropical rose sun patients. They are very big. Nice, big, full-sized baskets. I grabbed, I believe, four of these. The nursery or grower slash nursery that I picked these up from is called Weethop, Weethop or Wythop out here in St. Louis, and they have these for fantastic prices. And look at how much growth they already have on them. I do also have a flat of variegated sun and patience over here. That's a mix of the tropical rose and then the orange. Let me see if I can find a tag in here for these. So there's the orange called Vigorous Orange. It, just, it looks like the other one, but with orange flowers. Oh, I didn't mean to buy this one. The Variegated Salmon. That's not one of my favorites. Okay, well, I have four of those. <laughs> it's okay, they're still pretty. They have a, well, an in-between flower between the orange and the pink. It's more of a, well, it's salmon-y color. Not one of my favorites. Don't know why I grabbed four of those. That was an accident. Things got kind of overwhelming when I was there. The parking lot was packed, and it was one of those days where I was like, I just want to get the plants and have everything ready to go to get planting this year. I don't want to do a lot of bouncing back and forth to the nurseries, which made the car ride interesting. It was a very full car. Uh, anyways, have a nice mix of those tropical rows and the orange ones, the salmons, I'll figure something out with. There's only four of those. The others, there are six or eight of each. I can't really remember. A couple of strobilanthes. Aren't they beautiful? Persian shields. Always got to throw a couple of those in the garden every year. That gorgeous metallic -y foliage. Look how nicely that pairs with those canary wing begonias, too. I think I have four and I have a. No, are there six over there? I have ten of the canary wing begonias. There's a few right there that I picked up while I was at that Wythop nursery. And then six more over here that were at Ace Hardware for a very good price. They're nice and big. Through the canary wings last year, I'd grown them before and wasn't crazy about them. And then last year I had some in my front yard on the porch and I don't know, I guess my taste changed. I just fell in love with them. I love the chartreuse kind of lime green foliage that they have. It just lightens up wherever you put them, brightens the space up. And in the case with the variegated sudden patients, 
I have talked about these before and I've planted them almost every single year, the variegated sun patients. Uh, just a few of them. I don't usually plant very many because they're very loud, like extremely loud plants. That's something that really draws attention. It's hard to notice anything else when you got that much yellow variegation going on those pretty bright pink flowers. It's nice to have around. Looks fantastic, but it can take away from other things. I usually go with the Sun Patience Compact Hot Coral. That's one that I really, really like. And there's one that I believe is called Deep Rose. I love that one too. I'm so sorry about this lighting. There's nothing I can do about it. It's outdoors, we're in the sun. I thought I was out here early enough, apparently not. Anyways, moral of the story there is that this year I, I changed my mind. I was like, you know what? It's gonna be loud. And patients are one of those plants where they aren't something you usually plant for the foliage, right? There are a lot of plants where they have nice foliage, they have nice flowers and so much appeal to them. And patients, we tend to plant them in the garden because they are just covered in flowers. It's a really easy way to get a dramatic pop of color but then you add the variegation and on top of being a heavy bloomer. And yeah, it's just loud and very distracting. So I figured why not plant nothing but the variegated kind this year? That's why there's four of those and an awful lot of the smaller ones. And then here are the other two over there. Yeah, it's gonna be loud. Garden's gonna be loud and colorful this year. Things can be balanced out with perennials and can play around with different colors and textures with annuals around them to help soften things. There'll be a lot of loud impatience planted around. I started to move on while I was still talking about the other plants. Sorry about that. Look at this dragon's wing begonia. Like, like actually, here, look at this. Look at how big this thing is. That's a monster. That's like a full grown plant. That's about what you'd hope to get out of them when you plant them up in the springtime and maybe they'll be this big by the end of the summer. Sometimes they'll be a little bit bigger, but I mean, isn't that fantastic? The dragon's wing pink begonia. I thought I got two of these, but apparently I got a pink one and a red one. See, there's the red. Then there's the pink. Obviously not the same, right? I've done this before. Something with the dragon's wings begonias, sometimes my eyes don't differentiate the red and the pink very well, but it's okay. They're so big, they don't need to be in the same spot. And I kind of like having one of each. As long as they're not right next to each other, it doesn't matter. It's just how big they are. Where's Turbo? We need a size comparison. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, sit. Sit. Good boy, Turbo. Okay, so there's the dog for scale. It's probably not that helpful since you don't know how big my dog is. There have been plenty of years where I will get the dragon's wings begonias and uh, plant them up all over the place, but in the smaller containers. But these were so cheap that I was like, why don't I just go ahead and just get a couple really big ones and have them as a nice pop instead of having them spread around and having to wait for them to get this big by the end of the year. Love that. Nice, big, giant begonias. Those are going to look fantastic. And they already look fantastic. I love a dragon's wing begonia. Probably why I like the canary wings. They're just a yellow dragon's wing. Here's another gigantic begonia. This one's kind of heavy. It's heavier than the other ones are. These out so you can get a better look at them on their own. Isn't that just beautiful? Oh, hummingbirds are going to be so happy. Another common type of begonia, this is uh, the San Francisco, has a much more pendulous habit to the flowers. And the flowers have sort of a glow to them. Isn't that beautiful? It's a sort of soft coral, maybe even into the salmon-y tone somewhat. A little bit more pink, a little bit brighter. They're fantastic for that dangly drapey vibe, which again, hummingbirds will appreciate. Isn't that fun? Fantastic. Love the San Francisco. For some reason, I uh, have had issues with these rotting out on me when it gets really hot outside, but that doesn't always happen. So I mean, it has to do with the potting media that they're in when I get them from the nursery, because usually when I get these, they're already in a basket. And I don't usually bother replanting them. We'll see what happens with that. Let's keep a closer eye on the drip with these when temperatures are like pushing into the 90s and lower hundreds and things are really humid out then I'll be more mindful of when it's getting watered and how much water the plant's getting. Speaking of 90s, it's supposed to be like 93 here. Actually, I think the day this video comes out, making things feel a lot more like summer. Look at the pineapple. Can't even see it. Love a pineapple. Just a cute little ananas. It didn't have a variety name on it, just said pineapple. It's a fun plant to have around. I did learn last year though that I have to keep these high enough that the dog can't get to him because he sniffs it and he'll just rip it right off that plant. Or at least he did last year. I don't know if you'd do that this year. Would you still do that, Toby? Would you still do that? Turbo doesn't seem interested. So that's good. I mean, so far anyways, he doesn't seem to want to dig into those. I have lots of petunias here, like a whole bunch. There's a Supertunia 
no, it's just Super Tunia Honey. I was going to say Vista. One that I buy every year, and then at the end of the season, I complain about how it's not the best grower. So <laughs> you look forward to that in a few months. really like the color on it. So even if it's not the best grower, I like having it around. I have two flats of Super Tunia Vista Jazzberries, which... I talked about in the Proven Winners video that came out oh, a couple videos before this one. Some of these will be planted here, some of them elsewhere, other people's homes. It's the same case here with the Super Tunia Vista bubble gums. I'm probably going to need more of those. The bubble gums are just kind of a gardening staple when you just want power and color. It's a plant that will grow and flower and stay pretty happy without a lot of maintenance. I also have several of the set Cressias or Tradescantias. Politas. These are just the purple heart plants. Nifty to have around. I will probably be planting these within the vicinity of these variegated sun and patience over here because I think that the colors will balance out well. They should. I think actually an Ipomia would do better at that, but I don't want a lot of Ipomia planted around because of the puppy. Could make him sick. This is a, uh, what is it? White lava colocasia. Talked about that in a different plant haul. Fun Colocasia. Gets some nice white variegation on it. Trailing Vinca. Love these. Always have to get one every single year. They're fantastic, fun plants to have around. They trail tightly over the front of the pots. I mean, they don't like bush out or anything like that. And they just have a nice structure to them. And I love the deep green foliage. And the, of course, with the Vinca flowers. The Cora Cascade. That's what that series is called. And this is a New Guinea impatient that is not flushed out all that well with flowers right now, unfortunately. It was looking beautiful a day or so ago. Isn't it pretty? Nice big orange flowers with a pinkish purple center. It looks more pink on camera. There's a hint of purple in there. This didn't have a variety name on it. It was just a New Guinea impatient. It was a nice big size. I already got some snails on the begonias. Let me get those out of here. Be playing around with those, planting them in other places. We're moving over here into the sun. Picture quality is about to change. This is the Tithonia the orange Mexican sunflower. They get nice and big. Past couple years I've had issues with these rotting out on me during the summertime, which I talked about before. I don't know if that's an issue of the sun just having changed back here. So later into the year, they get more afternoon shade. And then if the soil's too wet with the heat, things maybe you're getting mildewy around them. Uh, I'm gonna plant them in a different spot and see how they do. Okay, there's no hiding from it. Not summer yet, but it's certainly feeling like it. All that's really left over here is just more Super Tunia Vista Jazzberries. I have a whole bunch of them. Come down here and sit on the ground. Something kind of fun about sitting on the ground outside. I haven't done that in a long time because the patio has been so dirty. I have a few fuchsias here. This is a Winston Churchill. Has a very light purple flower that hangs out from those sepals. And then a Jillian Althea. Those are two of my favorite varieties. Unfortunately, they are not fans of the summer heat here, so it's always a struggle with them, but I try every year. And then here are, I believe, 10 of some of my favorite petunias. Come on, let's get into the shade and get in focus. These are the Rose Vein Serfinias. I guess it's not much to look at right now, is it? They don't have any flowers on them quite yet. I haven't grown these in a really long time. I couldn't find them for a couple of years. The Serfinia, the Rose Vein Serfinia specifically, has always been one of my favorites. I really like the color of the flower. The picture here is fairly true to what the flowers look like. I'd say they're a little bit more deep than what you're seeing there on the tag. These get huge. The Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum, that's kind of like the gold standard, the new gold standard of just a petunia that grows like insanity. These Serfinias, with the right amount of light, they will get big. I don't think the tag really does it justice. Five to seven inches tall with a spacing of five feet. So I used to plant these in the pots around the pool a long, long, long time ago, and they would drape over the edges of the pots that were, I think they're about 30 inches high, and they would come down and like actually start to drape across the ground. They flowered very, very well. Maybe not as heavily as the Vista bubblegum. I'm looking forward to having these three petunias this year, the Rosevein Serfinia, Super Tunia Vista Jazzberry, and then of course Super Tunia Vista bubblegums, because I would like to actually see them all growing in the same yard at the same time. Try and have them in certain spaces where they'll get some more conditions and just be able to do a compare and contrast because perhaps I'm romanticizing a memory. Maybe they weren't as great as I thought they were, they're Serfinias. I don't really know, it's been a few years, but I remember loving them. The backyard also used to get more sun, so we will see. That's the thing I love about a Super Tunia Vista bubblegum, is one, it's fun to say, that name just rolls right off the tongue. And even though they do prefer full sun, 
they are a strong, strong grower. And I've had them up here like on the edges of the hot tub before where they get morning sun and afternoon shade and they still grew and flowered wonderfully. Not as nicely as they would in the sun, but it was still a nice trailing color, colorful plant to have back there. Gulliver Pink Scopia. It's got really pretty pink flowers. It's just a pink bacopa. I love a pink bacopa. Good trailers. They have a really cute cherry flower on them. And then I think all that's left over here in this area, well, we've seen the pomegranate, Pepe Le Pom pomegranate that was in the Proven Winners Hall. All of these things right here were in that hall. So there's the Monarch's Banquet, I believe, Asclepius. It's a variegated Asclepius curasavaca, and it's just a gorgeous plant. Absolutely love them. The Apricot Mandevilla from Suntory. I got it from Proven Winners, but you can find them from Suntory. I'm seeing them everywhere this year. They're all over the place. And then there's the Coral Orange Sunrise Diamantina. I don't know if I'm saying that right. A couple of Stadia She Goes Gardenias, a Chiclet Orange. Tacoma, Esperanza back there, and then way back there in the corner <laughs> where the dogs can't get to it is an awesome Pretty Limits Oleander. Those were, I'll link that video down below. So if you want to get a better look at those and a nice description of them, then you can check that video out. The Oleander will be going in my driveway where the dogs can't get to it. For now, I just kind of tucked it back there. I brought the Eureka Palm out here and I just, it is so full. It's never been this full before in the springtime. I think it enjoyed having the heater in the garage. And I've been concerned because, you know, storm season here is basically now through mid I mean, it seems like it's always storm season here. But the peak of our tornadoes and everything is, I believe, the last week of May into early June. May 20th into early June, something like that. Anyways, I wanted to surround the Eureka Palm with other things to help hold it in place because it's got a lot of foliage. It's basically a sail at this point. I think that thing could just go fly in. And having the pot here helped give me a way to tuck that oleander back there. I don't have the drip set up in the driveway yet, and I don't want to put it out there because it will just cook. Pardon those shadows again. And then, uh, with, I mean, I'm sure you've seen them. It's hard to not have these in the shots. There's one, two, three, four, five flats of impatience. Just regular wall wallerianas. That doesn't roll off the tongue quite as easily. An assortment of colors that will be going well, all over the garden in the spots that get morning sun and afternoon shade. And I, actually, I need five more. These were all I was able to find. It's going to be a lot of impatience going in the ground. There's going to be a lot of color out here this year. Oh, and then there are, there's some uh, sweetheart lime ipomias over there. Just, just a few. They have nice heart-shaped leaves. Those are going to be pretty coming over the sides of some containers. Is there anything else over here? Is it time to move on to the other spots yet? I think it might. Oh no, the strawberry. Look at the strawberry. Isn't that cute? It's a trailing strawberry. It has red and pink flowers on it. Don't know the, I guess I could look. That in the fun trail. Isn't that a fun trail is what I was trying to say. They're a tag. Yes, there is a tag. This is a Toscana strawberry. Don't know about the flavor. None have become ripe yet. I feel like I've grown the Toscana before though. It looks very familiar and the name is very familiar. I just forgotten. I got this from Greenscape here in St. Louis if you were wondering. The majority of those other plants were like Home Depot, Lowe's, Weethop, or Sugar Creek, or Greenscape if you're here and looking for those plants. Oh, and Proven Winners Online. I just thought it was fun because it has a mixture of pink and red flowers on it. As things have gotten warmer and sunnier, the pink is becoming more of a magenta, which I'm fine with. I still think it looks very nice. Hopefully they taste good. If not, it's all right. Still cute. Not planning on keeping this right there, but I have drip run through these planters all up here. So it's just been helping me keep it watered. I just knocked something over. What was it? Oh, it's a crocodile geranium. There we go. There were other plants in another hall. Anything that's been in a hall this year, I'll link it below. Okay, so with the last few, well, I guess this is the only one. I was going to say I'm going to move them into the shade so we can see them. But I don't think I can really move the other ones into the shade, though. This is a Hamelia Patens. Excellent plants. Absolutely love these. I think these will overwinter better with the new setup in the grow space. I used to be able to overwinter them, no problem. And then it's a bunch of that. It doesn't matter. We don't need to go into all that. Excellent plant to have around for the hummingbirds. The flowers are just starting to swell up. Some have fallen off, so it's kind of in between a blooming cycle. But I think you can get the idea from looking at it. They have really thin, narrow, trumpet-shaped flowers. They start off this red color and they fade into an orange and usually about like that long. Little narrow tubes. The hummingbirds just love them. Fantastic plants. Usually I think root hardy to zone eight. So if you're in zone eight, a fun perennial. They grow fairly quickly too. These normally, for me, they'll push about four feet in a single season just 
like having them in a pot. I think one year I even had them get up to six feet. So there are different types. This is the large leaf form. I don't, don't, can't remember what the difference is, what the names are. It's been a long time. The ones with the larger leaves on them do tend to get bigger faster. You can find them that have a smaller leaf. They say smaller. I'll do a little dig and put a thing up here on the screen. Or no, you know what? I have a video. I'll link that. It was a few years ago, so unfortunately I don't remember the different names. This one does tend to have a bit more of a wild appearance if you don't keep it pruned. They respond well to pruning. You can come in and prune them every so often. They'll just encourage more branching and more flowering. Overall, just a fun shrub to have around for the pollinators. That's fun. Do we recognize that? That's an ambulatin. Ambulatin pictum. I always struggle. My tongue just doesn't want to say the name. Super fun. Tropical plants. I'm pretty sure hardy to zonate. There are lots of different fun varieties with different types of flowers. This one looks like the tiger eye. If I had to guess, you see all the flowers. They just kind of look like little balloons. Little lanterns that hang down. And you can see on the inside, they're in the Malvaceae family. Very heavy feeders. They'll put on a good amount of growth in a single year. And there are dwarf varieties, smaller varieties for if you just want something little to grow on your patio. There's a lot to choose from when you dig into these. They're plants that I've grown before, but just started to shy away from them because I wasn't getting enough growth out of them in the season to appreciate the flowers because the flowers are all down there. You have to look up to be able to see them, but this one is standardized, so it's got a bit of an advantage. So I was thinking hopefully that will make it so that, you know, in a few weeks it'll be more like up here. The flowers will be easier to see. Another plant that responds very well to pruning, you give that a cut back every so often, kind of like a lantana. There's a lantana tree back there. Encourages more branching, more fullness, and get those flowers to come out even heavier and a heavy feeder because, well, I mean, they flower so profusely, so require a nice, rich, well-drained organic soil. It's going to hold on to some moisture and one that I would fertilize like probably at least twice a month during the summertime. Maybe even weekly because they just flower and flower and flower. The, they probably appreciate the extra feeding. All right, last one. It's another hibiscus. Seminal pink. One of my favorites, but look at how big it is. Look at the standard. That's up against my fence here. It's a good probably I'd say six, maybe five and a half feet tall if it were in the ground and potted. Nice big ones. So most of the hibiscus that I've shown you that I get, I rotate through my iguana cage and I also feed to my tortoise. This one will not be the, I won't be doing that. This is, this one's just for me. It's just to look pretty and I'm very happy about it. I haven't seen the tall standards in a couple of years. All the stuff that was going on with the gardening crazes and whatnot, they were just selling out really fast. And even when I did see them, I wasn't finding the seminal pink. That one's my favorite. Beautiful bubblegum pink flower. Yeah, I think that that's everything. Yeah. Patience will be going down here. All this will be gone. They're just adjusting to the sun. So there'll be a nice row of impatience there. There'll be a row of impatience going through the front over here. Again, this will all be gone. They're just acclimating to the sun. And then I'll have impatience filling in in pots over here. Because you can see this part of the patio. Not as much sun. Good amount of morning sun, but still not very strong. And then there will be variegated sun and patience all along, splattered throughout the yard, the garden, and in the pottery that is. Moving into the shade. So I know I mentioned, I'm pretty sure I did, because I've talked about it before, about my issue with the variegated sun and patience being just that they're so loud. But I figured this year it might be fun to plant more of them, because I usually just plant like one or two of them. I thought since everything is more tidy out here, I've spent so much time cleaning up, there's not as much chaos around, I don't think it's going to bother me. I think I'll actually really appreciate it because it's going to look more intentional instead of potentially just adding to the chaos from all the mess and everything that had built up over the last couple of years out here. So that's the direction I decided to go. They have some damage on them. We had a very brief cold snap. But I don't think that that's really what the damage is from. I think that this is just some greenhouse transitioning happening here. And this is just kind of what the flowers look like as they fade out. Then new buds will open and those will we get it. It's an impatient. We'll drop the old ones and put out new ones. Just wish it was looking a little bit prettier for the show and tell. Do you have any new flowers on you? There we go. That's so pretty. I love the tropical rose sun impatient. Oh, and I do have a new <laughs> colocasia here. Just looks like a regular colocasia. This one's going to take some time and maturity and some sunlight to get its color on it. Colocasia Redemption. I know, horribly backlit, but it just looks like a regular Colocasia right now, so not that exciting. But it will be exciting here in a few weeks to a few months. Also, got a couple new pots. 
I know, I just spent the entire month of April getting rid of old pottery, but I just, I couldn't resist. How beautiful are these? Isn't that just gorgeous? Love the shades of blue and green. It has a patina kind of look to it. Love them. Think they're very pretty. I don't know if they have tags. Campania, the beauty of authenticity. That's all it says. Very pretty pots. I know, didn't need more. Just couldn't resist. They like remind me of something you'd see in a shipwreck, right? That patina, just like old rusty iron, like something you'd see at the bottom of the ocean, which would technically just be sea garbage. Maybe that shouldn't be appealing, but it, it did something for me. All that dang Johnny Depp, Amber Heard stuff going on. It's got me thinking about Pirates of the Caribbean. Lots and lots of fun new things to get into the ground, and I am excited for it. But I'm going to have to, not planting all this stuff in the afternoon sun. Heck no. I'll get started on this bright and early tomorrow morning. I was holding off waiting to get the hull done and get the house plants moved outside. To, I thought that the house plants being moved out was more of a priority than getting the annuals going, especially because there's still a few things I'm waiting on. And a lot of these will be going around some of the palm trees that I keep in storage that won't be here until I think the week of May 22nd. So like some of the stuff like I can't even do anything with quite yet. I think I'm going to scoot the begonias out of this spot. They were fine here when it was in the 50s and 60s and just constantly misting on them. But I, we're up to, I think, 86 now, and they're, they're starting to curl their leaves. That means they need to get moved. I don't think they're appreciating this. Going to give those a scoot and wrap it up and call it a day. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in the garden? Hopefully. I mean, I've been saying this for months. Hopefully things are warming up for y'all. Be able to get outside and get some work done. Get your gardening on. Oh, I did want to mention the Serfinias. I had said everything was from Proven Winners or those local places here. The Serfinias, the Scopia, and then the Fuchsias, which I should also probably move out of the sun. Those were from um, Growjoy, who I had never ordered from before because they're pretty pricey. This is the only place that I was able to find the Serfinias, so I went ahead and gave it a shot. I thought the packaging was great. I gotta look up to see if the things are recyclable. I think they're number eight. Hopefully they are. That is important. I like to think about that when it comes to packaging, about things not being, you know, too terribly wasteful. Everything was nice and sturdy, very easy to unbox. I very much appreciate that. It drives me nuts when I'm unboxing plants and they're just like covered in tape and damp newspaper and they don't have anything in there to keep them from flying around inside the box or there's too much in there to they're like end up being smashed it's not rocket science we've talked about this before in many plant halls it's not that hard to package them up properly i'm very satisfied with the last few orders i've placed it's been a while since i've gotten something in and just been like what is wrong with you you could do better that hasn't been the case in a while look at them oh they're so sad that was something i had noticed with the canary wings last year is they can't take quite as much sun uh, at least not in my backyard, as the regular dragon wings, which makes sense. I mean, look how white the foliage is. That's going to scorch a lot easier. And even the dragon's wings, I have best luck with those when it's like bright morning sun, and maybe filtered light throughout the afternoon. And I've had them on drip in really big containers. Sometimes I can pull off full sun for them, but then we have the days where it's like in the hundreds and not a cloud in the sky. And sometimes they'll crisp up. So afternoon shade is where I like to go with those. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.